Hi there, welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I'm Catherine. I have a flip through today of a journal I just recently finished and I made it from volume two of the 1929 edition of the World Book Encyclopedia, From Beach to Childs. And I'm going to do a little flip through of it so you can see what's inside. Um, just to start off, a few of the basics, the math. <laughs> this is a big journal. So it's about six and three quarters wide and nine and a half, maybe nine and five eighths long. And then it is about one and three quarter inches thick. It has nine signatures in it. And it has approximately 208 pages. I say a, a minimum of 208 because I added in some extra pages at the end that were the full color plates that were in this original book. So there actually are more than 208 pages, but I haven't recounted to see how many those extra pages added up to. Um, the pages are mostly full size, some are little half sizes, not very many, but I like adding those in for variety. It has permanent ties on the side made from tea dyed um, seam binding. You'll see from the top here, I refurbished the spine and then I put the new text block in using a hidden hollow back spine method so that your book will lie open nicely. Hold on, let's move this lace. Your book will lie open nicely when uh, you're writing in it. The pages lie beautifully. So a little bit about this book and about how I work. Just about everything in this book is from uh, a thrifted source, whether, whether it's a thrift store or an antique shop, or yard sales, or church rummage sales, or online with Facebook Marketplace. Marketplace. I, I like my junk journals to actually be made from someone else's junk, and my own junk too. <laughs> so um, the only thing new in this is the glue is new, the threads to sew the signatures are new, uh, a little bit of distress ink, that is new, and this bulldog clip here, even though it looks old, it's actually new. Otherwise, all the laces, all the papers, all the leaves, when we get to the, uh, the insert, and I'll show you that in a moment, everything is repurposed, which really makes it truly a junk journal, but a beautiful junk journal, I think. Now, you'll notice right away these beautiful leaves, um, sticking out the side here. Let me lift it up so you can see better. This journal, because it is from beach to child's, beach meaning the beach trees, and child's, I decided that I would give it just a very light theme of trees and forests and things that are in the forest and children. That's what came to mind when I kept thinking about how I was going to create this journal. So that's, you're going to see that here and there as we go through the book. But as ever with my journals, you're going to see a lot of pages where you'll be able to write in it or collage in it and make this book your own. There is so much room. These are the original end papers to the book from, uh, from when it was first published. And as you can see here, right on the front page, it was originally published in 1929, and that's the original first page to the book. I've tried to incorporate many pages back into this book that were in the original text block, and I'll also be sending some extras home to the new owner so that they can continue making a bit of art with some of these pages, which is fun to do. Now this insert, it's not actually part of the book, it's removable. And the way I created it was so that it can be a journaling board and you will be able to put it behind whatever page you're working on and it will give you a firm surface for writing on. And you can actually use either side. I've made them both pretty and both a little bit different. This has sort of some collaged laces and fabrics and 
There's even a little feather charm there. So if you prefer this side, simply turn it that way. And when you close your book, you're going to see that the laces uh, show and the leaves all show. But if you like the other side, simply flip it over and close it up and you'll just have just these beautiful lush leaves. And then I simply took the liberty of, it reminded me that it could sort of be like a clipboard. So that's where I added this little rusty bulldog clip here. And for the time being, I put a little photo. There's a gentleman in the forest there wearing a top hat and I thought he looked rather dapper. So I'll put this aside for now, but this will be in the center of the book and you'll be able to put it wherever you're working, whatever page you're working on, you'll know to go right to the page because your insert will be there. So let's put that up there for now and we'll do a quick th uh, flip through. You're going to see a lot of Eloise Wilkin. You're going to see a lot of Dick and Jane. These are all original. I have fussy cut them out of original books and glued them into this book. Wherever possible, I've used the original pages to make journaling cards, such as these two. So this Beatles was in the original book, and then there's Sally from the Dick and Jane series. She's sitting there with her little teddy and a book. And then this picture uh, is some boys up an apple tree. Again, lots of trees in this book. So I used a word snippet that says little creatures. <laughs> and you can journal on the backs of these cards. And then I also made a journaling card here, a big tag, and it's got mushrooms because you find mushrooms in the forest. And then there's room on the back to journal. These um, pages are from an old uh, accounting book that I found out in Prince Edward County, Ontario. This is from the original text block. This is from a 1947 uh, book I have on how to draw and this is actually the page that is about beech trees. I'll lift it up so that you can see. So although beech is the first tree mentioned because of this volume of the encyclopedia, you're going to see um, other trees as well. That was my starting point. All these tea dyed papers I tea dyed myself. There's a little pocket here with a little bit of a collage. And the thread that I used to sew this on, that's actually where that price tag for 65 cents came from. <laughs> it fell off the uh, spool of thread. This actually was old thread. And uh, I just thought it was so pretty. And you don't see Woolworth's, <laughs> you don't see Woolworth's price tags anymore. Here's a journaling tag that I made from the um, entry for Charlemagne. And there's a little boy from the Dick and Jane series reading a newspaper. So I imagined him that he's reading up on the history of Charlemagne. And you can journal on the back. And it just fits right into that little pocket right there. Another original page out of the uh, text block. Another Dick and Jane fussy cut. The pages, the first and the last signature, I used uh, scrapbook paper. Even that has been thrifted from my little thrifting sources. It wasn't quite wide enough, so I sort of Frankensteined it and made it wider uh, using some sewing so that it would fit into the book and be full size. And again, I tea dyed this from Dick and Jane book. Uh, walnut leaves and a walnut. This is from the original book. There's some people down here I fussy cut from a book. Uh, they're harvesting fruit of some sort. And I've glued this accounting paper over top of the print because it was from the original book so that this can now be journaled on. This is from uh, an old children's composition school book. There's a little pocket here from a 1950s um, children's storybook. And inside... I put some, this is off cuts from the paper that I actually used in the signatures. So I stamped on it a little outhouse because, you know, quite often if you've got a cottage in the forest, the outhouse is 
back further into the forest. And then this is about uh, the Charter Oak in Connecticut. So I put Jane, she's riding her bike with her little kitty on there. And there's a fussy cut here that says the little pine tree was happy. And again, it's forest. This is from the original text block. This is a card. I sewed it onto the edge. I had to off do an off-center fold for that Dick and Jane paper. And in order to bring it out to the edge, I sewed along. And this is actually a card from a Bird Watchers uh, University project that I found. So I put that handsome little fellow. It looks like he just found his breakfast or maybe his dinner because they're out at night. <laughs> and I thought he looked very charming right there. This is from the original book as well. The colors were just beautiful. For 1929, those colors are still so vivid and lovely. And it's blank on the back, so there's more room for journaling. Here's a little pocket that I made from one of the pages of the book on butterflies. And so I added a few little tucks. There's, again, some offcuts from the ledger paper that I used, and I stamped a little tree on it. And then uh, there is Sally with her teddy bear, and this is uh, from the page that was about the chestnut tree. Here's a spread from Edith Holden's uh, Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. And I just sewed on by hand a little um, Rolodex card right there. I thought that looked pretty. Just give a little variety. This is from another antique birding book that I had that I created into a junk journal, but I had some pages left over, so I saved them. And you can journal on the back. A little fussy cut up here onto one of the original text pages. This is a page from a 1940s gardening book that I just love. So I created some space for journaling up here, and then I added a little friend down here. Here is, this is the, um, one moment. I'm back. I apologize for that pause in the uh, video. This is from that uh, 1930s science book that I mentioned earlier, and it's just the parts of a tree. And then I uh, put some tissue paper. It's actually pattern paper. It's from a dress pattern like this. And I glued it over top so that it can now be journaled on. Here's a vintage card that I thought looked really pretty in the center uh, because it's got lots of trees. I thought that was very pretty. Oh, a cool thing you can do with these if you don't want necessarily to be journaling inside, you don't expect to be, you can run a strip of glue here and here and glue it together and then it becomes a pocket and you can tuck things inside there. So, But I thought I'd leave that up to you because some people just simply like the extra journaling space or the extra collaging space for photos. Here's another tuck spot. And it is made from the page that had the alphabet for the blind. So it's got Braille there. And I thought that was fascinating. You're, you're going to notice a lot of B's and C's because this is volume two from that encyclopedia set. So this is the page from Butterfly, hence <laughs> the letter B. And I just put some little birds. You're going to see more of these birds here and there throughout the book because I fussy cut a whole page that's right near the end. So just keep your eye out for those little birds. They're here and there in the book. This is also from the original text block. I loved that there was a section on books and book binding. I thought that was very appropriate for a book that has been uh, rebound and made into a, a journal. Some mushrooms. You usually find mushrooms in the forest. And that's Edith Holden. Fussy cut from the Edith Holden book.
some fussy cut leaves on this music. I love the shape of this book. It's unusual uh, landscape orientation. Again, this is from the original text block. The colors are still so vivid. I had to include this. So beautiful. And of course, you find beetles in the woods. On this page, there's a little a little tiny airmail envelope that flips out. I glued this on so that you can journal on it. And then inside the envelope, I just added another piece of the off cuts from all these pages. I had about two inches left at the bottom that I had to uh, trim to fit in the book. So I tried to reuse them wherever I could. So that's in there. You can put whatever you like in there. Nice little hiding spot. Here's one of those little birds. This is where the volume about halfway through began to have uh, topics from the letter C. So I included that and I made a big journaling tag from, this was from Bugle. So these, this music is uh, typical Bugle music. And then there's Dick and Jane playing there. And then there's room on the back for journaling. And there's a little squirrel uh, with leaves. And this is from um, a package I have of uh, Art Nouveau wrapping paper. And then I just added for journaling space um, a receipt slip, a bank receipt slip for some company. I don't know. I find them at thrift stores. And it's paper and it's interesting. I like the red numbers on it. There's mushrooms, so I thought I'd put this one in. Another vintage card, and again, I just thought those trees were so pretty. So I included it, and it has lots of room. You could actually make uh, two pockets if you want, simply by gluing that down. Or you can cut along the top here, just use a knife and run it along there, and that will give you extra pages for journaling space. But I left that as is so that you can decide what you'd like to do with it. Again, gorgeous, gorgeous artwork from the original text block on birds' nests. Aren't they pretty? I'm just amazed at how vivid the colors still were for a book that was published in 1929. It's almost 100 years old. This is from um, an Eloise Wilkins book. I fussy cut and glued down there. And again, I used some accounting paper and glued it right to the page so that now it can be journaled on up here or collaged on. Here's a little bit of Edith Holden from the page that had all her toadstools. I even saved the page number up there. I thought this handsome fellow looked uh, very regal up there and it sort of fit that there were trees there and it's like he's sitting up in the tree. Uh, the section on butterflies and a little bit more Eloise Wilkin fussy cut and put down there this is the page out of the original text block on butterflies and again the artwork is just stunningly beautiful and I just had to leave them be it was a little bit tempting to fussy cut these but I just couldn't do it all together on that page they're so beautiful and I glued it in by running a strip of glue down here so that it actually became an extra page. So this is what I mean when I say the book has 208 pages. But then I went back in and I added several extra pages uh, loosely like this. Uh, so it's there's more than 208, but I'm not sure how many. <laughs> and here's another spread again from uh, Edith Holden. And then again, I just did a little bit of sewing here. And uh, there's a little bit of Eloise Wilkin there. And she looked like she was strolling by and enjoying the wildflowers. Here's a pocket uh, from a card. This is actually from Happy Mail from my friend. And then I added in some, some interesting papers that uh, can be journaled on. So I tucked those in there. You could put whatever you like in these pockets. Oh, come on. In you go. Are you just a tight fit? Right, yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's why. It's a two-sided pocket. I should have known that. There we go. Much easier to get in and out. 
bullfrog. I liked him. Here's a little tag that's also part of the signature. So it has one on the other side, a little further back. This is from a Dick and Jane book. I had to reinforce the spine, so I used some of Handel's Messiah. Here's a little tuck spot. This is from the original text block. I turned it into a journaling spot. This is a playing card. I don't know if I can show you the back at all. You can see that it was the Ace of Spades. It was, of course, a little bit bigger, but it had a horrible color edge. <laughs> so I cut the edge off and gave it a fresh edge because I loved that little squirrel sitting there on that log in the forest having his lunch. And then there was a tear in this paper, uh, so I, I fixed it. <laughs> this spread is some um, ledger paper. I thought it was appropriate because it's got lots of green in it. This is, apparently, I've never seen this tree my son has. This is General Sherman from out in California. Huge, huge tree. This is the other side of the fussy cut of the people uh, harvesting fruit from fruit trees. And of course, Dick and Jane. There's the little bunny down there. The other side of that tag. And again, uh, the final signature, as I said, I had to doctor this, the scrapbook paper so that it would be wide enough. So I did a little bit of uh, Frankenstein sewing there. This is from a Dick and Jane type book. It's equally as old, but it's not the same artist who did Dick and Jane. A different artist. But I liked the children, and they're sitting there enjoying a book with their little friend who's got glasses on. And this is the page where they start discussing the child in the original text block, so I included that. Here's a fussy cut tree that I thought was appropriate because there's two little children climbing up in it. So I fussy cut that out and put it on the page that was devoted to the child. And then this is from that science book, this uh, um, word snippet. A tree is just, is a big plant. So I thought that was appropriate on that page. I love putting guest book spreads in the middle of a signature. So this one has one as ever. And it's all tea dyed and looks really yummy with that lovely uh, staining around the edges. Here's more of those little birds that I told you about to watch for. And I fussy cut this from a nursery rhyme book that I have from a poem called The Babes in the Wood. And it's a brother and a sister. They've fallen asleep at the base of a tree there and the, the little birds are covering them up with leaves. And on the back page here, as I said, this is the original end papers. And then here I reused from one of the first pages where it says volume two, and I made a tuck spot out of that. And then because it's a sunny side journal, there's a two nanas bookmark that goes into it. And I made some journaling cards from these old playing cards, and I thought they were fun. They were from a, a set that go together. You'll notice the artist looks, the work is similar. But this one has a tree, but this one has some children <laughs> who are skinny dipping in the pond. And I thought that was kind of cute. So I turned those into journaling cards. And then this is the entry on the beech tree. Hold on, let me make sure that's in focus. There we go, on the beech tree. So I had to include that because it goes from beach to child, this uh, episode. And then there's a little bit more... Um, Edith Holden, uh, Mushrooms, and then there's Journaling Room on the back and also here on the front. So that is uh, the World Book Volume 2 from Beach to Childs. I hope you enjoyed this flip through. It, uh, it was such a pleasure to make. Here, I'm going to put this back into anywhere in the center. It really doesn't matter because it still looks pretty when it's hanging out like that. Let's flip it over just for fun as we finish up here and let those lace hang out there like that. So this book uh, will be available for sale in my Etsy shop. Um, usually they're available at the time that this is viewable. You can pop over to my Etsy shop 
and take a look, see if maybe this is the book for you. Uh, thanks for watching. The link for my Etsy shop will be down below. And I hope you enjoyed this flip through. Have a great day. Bye.